Okay, let's resume. So we've seen that continuity preserves lots of different things, right? Con continuity preserves limits. Continuity preserves compactness. So the image of a compact set is compact. And as, as somebody conjectured last time, continuity also preserves connected sets. So if you take the image of a connected set, then in fact, uh, the image is connected. So suppose f from x to y is continuous, and E is, let's say, a connected uh, subset uh, of x, then uh, f of E is connected. Very believable result, right? You can't con continuously deform a set x into something that's not a, con a connected set into something that's not connected without introducing a discontinuity, right? How are we going to prove this? Hmm. Time for a picture. Here's a space x. Here's a space y. OK. And here is a, um, a function from x to y. OK. Smiley, smiley face. Um, sorry, that's, that was it, my only excuse for drawing it down there. I'll just draw it here. It's fine. Um, hmm. OK. Uh, let's see. Oh, I have a s connected space here. Yes, how's this? Here's a subset E, which is clearly connected. Maybe it's the state of California. <laughs> OK. Yeah, it's currently, California's connected, currently, but uh, may not always be. OK. OK, great. So um, the claim is the image is connected. So what's, a, what's the perfect way to start off this proof? Because connectedness, what does it mean to be connected? It's a set cannot be se separated. Not the union of two non-empty separated sets. So uh, it's always easier, actually, to work with sets that aren't connected, right? So if I want to show the set of the image is connected, maybe I should do this by contradiction. Suppose f of e is uh, not connected. Well, what does that mean? That means f of e is what? Separated, it's the union of two separated sets. And I'm just going to say that by saying a separation. And of course, we know what a separation means. It means they're non empty, right? And um, A closure intersect B, and A intersect B closure is what? It's also empty. OK, remember that. That's what we're going to need that fact. So let me just draw a picture that can't be true. Suppose I have a set A. This, this image looks like this. F is continuous, which means all sorts of different things. OK, so you're thinking in terms of metric, metric condition. Let me encourage you to think in terms of the topological condition, because this really is a topological fact, right? It's not, it really doesn't depend on anything r r related to the metric. So uh, maybe the topological argument would be easier. So let's see. Um, would you agree that if A and B were both open sets, this would be very easy to show, yes? If A is open, then, because F is continuous, the preimage is open, and B, preimage is also open. This is a union of two open sets, and uh, in E, th these sets are clopen, 
okay? Because no point in here can be a limit point of a point in here because they're interior to the other set, right? So you'd be in good shape if they were both open. So we're going to do something that's very close to this idea. So let's call this set A and this set B and consider the claim. So notice uh, I'm going to give this set a name. I'm going to look at whatever A is, I'm going to look at its, uh, its, in, its closure. That's one thing I can do. I'll close it. A closure. And I'll look at um, B closure. Is that OK? Now, what do I know about A closure and B closure? They what? They're closed, thank you. <laughs> but because of separation, what's true about the closures? A closure does not intersect what? B. It might intersect B closure. So let me just suggestively draw the closures so that they intersect. OK? OK, what's the next thing you might do? Since I don't know anything about A and B, they're not necessarily open or closed. If they were open, I could take their inverse images and these be open. If they're closed, I could take the inverse image. So let's take the inverse image of A closure. What do I know about that? It's closed. Good. So notice, let's call this set Ka, which is the inverse image of A closure, and Kb, which is the inverse image of B closure. It, let's notice that these are closed since f is continuous. OK. Great. So they're sitting over here somewhere, yes? And maybe they look like this. OK. That's Ka and Kb, right? Northern and Southern California. OK. Mm, right. Well, um, what can I say here? Uh, what I want to do is, is use this, these sets somehow to produce a separation of E, which would give me a con contradiction. Yeah? So what's the separation of E that, I, that I, I might suggest? Well, just take a, just take a give me a. Give me a um, give me a proposed separation of E. Well, K A and K B is not quite going to be a separation because they might intersect, and so their inverse images might intersect. Yes. Um, if I take the interiors, I might be in trouble because I might leave out some points right at the boundary. How about just the inverse images of A and B? So those are smaller sets. So let's, let me write that here. Let's call a set E1 and E2. Let's let E1 be the inverse image of, of A. And uh, of course, that might include lots of points, so I'm just going to intersect it with the original set E. And let's let E2 be the inverse image of the set B intersect E. Certainly, these are clearly disjoint, yes? Because A and B are disjoint. So inverse images are disjoint. Are they non-empty? Yes, why? Well, A and B are non-empty. And this is, the, this is the image of E. So these have to be images of points over here and here. OK, what's the, the last thing I want to show? Well, I hope to show there a separation. That is, the closure of this one doesn't intersect this, yes? OK, so I claim there a separation. Let's see why. Well. Notice that E1, I claim there's something very interesting. So the picture should be analogous here. Yes, E1 is contained in Ka, which is 